Joining us now is Mike Wilson, Chief U.S. Equity Strategist at Morgan Stanley. Mike, great to have you with us. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, now that the Fed's outlook for near zero rates is formalized through 2023, what, what does your portfolio look like? Yeah, I think um, it was Brian who was saying it. I mean, we didn't really learn anything new today from the Fed. They're just reminding us that they're there and they're going to continue to do their part of you know what's needed to get the recovery that we would all like. Um, a couple things stuck out to me in today's meeting. I mean, clearly they didn't give us any formal guidance on QE. I think there was some hope that uh, there may be uh, some more guidance forthcoming there. You can interpret that however you'd like. Personally, I think it, the interpretation that makes sense is that, you know, look, QE has not worked in terms of getting inflation, okay? Uh, they've committed to keeping front-end rates lower for as long as it takes. And I do find it kind of peculiar that they guided unemployment to be you know, 4% is what they think by 2023, but the PCE will only be 2%. So implicit in that, there's, you know, basically they're saying that their policy is going to fail, right? I mean, it's so sort of bizarre. You know, the AIT, you're not going to get above 2% by 2023. That that doesn't sound great. But I think it's a, it's a little bit of gamesmanship. That's what they do. You know, I think as Guy said, I agree. As long as that, you know, there's nothing in the headlines that forces them to start tightening, and they can keep playing this game to be supportive. And so that's all good news. I don't, I don't think there's anything bad in that. But I think implicit, the, the bigger message that I see coming from the Fed is that they're not going to be capping yields. Okay, They're shooting for the moon on inflation. They're going to probably end up getting more than they think. And they're not going to cap yields. And so that means the biggest sort of thing for the market that needs to be thinking about right now is that back-end rates could actually surprise us on the upside over the next three to six months as we continue to see this recovery continue. We're bullish on growth. We're bullish. We think inflation is coming. And that means that back-end rates can move, and that will be the single biggest impact on your portfolio construction that you want to have going forward. And that's how we're set up. We're set up for cyclicals, and we're set up for things that are going to do better in a higher back-end market. You're anticipating, though, much higher volatility through the end of the year. What is the primary driver, in your view, of that volatility? Yeah, well, we're already there. So, I mean, obviously, we've already moved volatility higher and I think the, the big driver is the election. Um, anytime you're in an election year, you just get higher volatility. I mean, clearly around the event itself, volatility is pretty well bid. Um, we also have this fiscal deal, which I agree is very important, probably more important than what the Fed is uh, telling us today because the Fed's already all in. And we don't, know, we don't have an answer on that yet. And then, of course, we still have to get through this uh, second wave that we know is coming. Um, I'm pretty optimistic it won't be nearly as bad as the first wave, and I think we can deal with it. Uh, but ultimately, it's uncertainty. So I think we have plenty of events that's going to keep all high between now and the, and the year end. So, Mike, I, I agree with you. And, and when I look at the Fed, where they upgrade the economic cycle and they lower the unemployment and then they keep rates the same. Walk me through again, though, because the cyclical play and the value play hinges on higher rates. So you had mentioned the back end of the curve. So can you just explain that again for the viewers? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's really not um, overly complicated. I think everybody, and by the way, rates investors understand this better than anyone. The only reason why rates are where they are is because nobody wants to challenge the Fed, right? Nobody, nobody thinks there's value in a 10-year Treasury bond right now or a 30-year Treasury bond. They just, but they're there because of financial repression, I think, as Tim was saying. Um, and, and there's a general belief that the Fed wants to keep rates lower. I, I don't really actually believe that. I think if, I think if we get a recovery... Um, that's being driven by better growth and maybe some inflation. I mean, the Fed would be thrilled with that. And I personally think they want back-end rates to go up. If it's not you know, uh, holding back the recovery, that would be very helpful in their ultimate goal of getting inflation, right? Because you can't get velocity in the system with a yield curve that's flat as a pancake. You need to keep us in the curve to get the banks creating money to generate that inflation. So I just think uh, folks have gotten lazy here. Um, they don't really see that all the other indicators that we look at are telling us that rates should be higher. And there's going to be a nonlinear move here at some point. And I think it's going to be a sequencing event as we get fiscal, as we get more evidence that we're getting through the virus, and then we get the election. Those three events collectively is going to look a lot like 2016. And we all know what happened in 2016 when the election occurred. Rates shot up. And I think that's going to be the same setup this time. Mike, thank you. Good to speak with you. Thank you, Melissa. Mike Wilson, Morgan Stanley. BK, you agree with that? 2016? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree a lot with Mike, uh, with what Mike is saying in terms of I think the biggest risk to this market is that you do get 10-year and 30-year rate shoot up. 
and what you saw a bit today when the market weakened, you did see some strengthening in, wake, in rates, and in particular in the inflation part of the rate. So not to get too wonky, but rates include what growth is plus inflation. And so the inflation part of rates really started to get bigger today. And so I think everybody says, ah, the Fed hasn't been able to create inflation. They did all this QE, it didn't happen. They have no credibility when it comes to inflation. When everybody thinks that way, BK wants to be on the other side. And I would argue that I do think we're going to get significant inflation in certain commodities and, and certain areas of the economy. 